Okay. Yep. You do. Hi, everybody. This is Jude. I want to thank you all for coming to the East Meadow Public Library, MCON. Um, well, this is what we're going to do. Charlie is going to mute everybody and um, just either raise your hand and you can go into participants or write in the chat room and we will let uh, Michelle and James know. Okay, because otherwise we hear more than we want to. Um, we hear phone conversations, we hear fights, we've heard many, 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 many things. So Charlie, go ahead and mute everybody except uh, Michelle and James. And me. From the radio is going to record you. Everybody is being recorded. We just want to let you know. And then he's going to post it wherever he posts it. Bye, everybody. All right. I'm going to do that thing right now. There's a dog. Do, do. Okay, I got Michelle. Now I got to get. Hello. There we go. You have to get James okay. and Mark Torres. And then Mark. I'm good. Mark, you're good? Okay, so it looks about right. Now I'll. All right, so here we go. So welcome to the first ever online MCON Fest, although this is their 10th anniversary, this first one online. Um, this is uh, their panel with two awesome voice actors. We have Michelle Knotts. Hello. <laughs> and James Carter Cathart. Cathcart. Cathcart, that's pretty good though. <laughs> so you guys are most famous for being Pokemon actors. However, you guys have a plethora of other things that you guys do. So let's do a quick rundown of what you guys are most famous for and your biggest roles. So um, Michelle, go ahead, start us off. I'm going first? Oh, okay. Hi, thanks for having me. Yay, this is so exciting. I got Piplup here with me. <laughs> <laughs> I always Piplup in the show. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, so uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, usually I go to MCON and uh, I'm so sorry I can't see people in person, but I'm glad that you guys are doing this. Thank you so much. This is awesome that you guys are doing this online. So thank you, thank you that I still get to see people and talk to them, even though not in person, but you know, I'm glad I can still see you. Thank, thank you so much for doing this. You guys are the best. Um, Kelly Gordon set this up for us. So thank you, Kelly. Thank you, you're so awesome. You're the best for doing this, thank you. Um, I do voiceovers and stuff. Um, I've been doing voiceovers for like 17 years for a very long time. Um, you probably know me best as like Jesse and Pokemon and I'm like a plethora of Pokemon. I'm like 60 Pokemon now. <laughs> um, you can just like go to my website and see how many voices and characters that I do. Uh, I've done like video games and anime and stuff. And um, uh, I don't know, I'm Ogio Chica in Genshiken. I'm Elisa Boskanovich in Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Um, oh, I've done like so many things. <laughs> it's hard to keep track. But um, yeah, thank you so much for having me here. Thank you. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> <laughs> so James, what what do you got? Well, I'm Carter Cathcart. I think most people in my voiceover work, like I know Michelle has, uh, she kind of knows me as Carter. That's my middle name. My first name is <laughs> Jimmy or Jim. I'm out in my, I'm actually in my hometown in Northern Indiana right now. And everybody calls me Jimmy. So I just like, <laughs> I started being Jimmy at like six months and never got out of it. So you can call me whatever you want and it's all fun. <laughs> i am uh, been doing uh, voiceovers. I think my first, I did some, some anime back in the late 80s, but my first real gig was um, the voice of, uh, there was a show called the ABC Weekend Special, which used to be on Saturday afternoons. It was, the re it was a live action show for kids. And yep. the host of the show was this cartoon cat, something about cats, um, <laughs> named O.G. Readmore. And so I had done the music for the theme package for the show and they were looking for a new voice. And I, this was, I've been, you know, hoping to jump in somehow into to the business. And that was a, such a lucky break because that OG Readmore, you know, he was the host of the show and he was on, I think for four years. And he was also the spokes cat for project literacy for ABC. So that was my first gig. And then when we were doing um, in the late, I don't know, 
I did a bunch of other gigs, but when in the late 90s, we, we had heard about this show that was coming from Japan. Nobody really knew about it. The only thing that we had heard was that some poor soul, there was a strobe effect in this show called Pokemon. <laughs> had, had an epileptic fit from watching. I said, well, that's not the great rep, is it? So, <laughs> but, we, so I was on the show right from the beginning. I did the voice of, um, I still do, it's just he's not around anymore, uh, uh, Gary Oak. I hope he does show, come up sometime, but he was in the first episode. He was Ash's you know, rival and he had the cheerleaders and he was a smart and he was my favorite. So, and then I've been doing um, voices for Pokemon ever since. I do a, a boatload of, of the critters as well, like Michelle does, but my main characters now are Meowth and James from Team Rocket. And I'm also the English adapter, the script writer. I've been doing that since season five. So we're on season 23 now. So it's been a, <laughs> been a lot of, I listen to the Japanese actors literally all the time and they're <laughs> just fantastic. So it's, it's nice to be in such good company. Anyway, I'm glad I'm here. It's my first year here and I appreciate the invite. It's lovely to see everybody. Thank you. All right, so let's see. So right, so right away, anybody who's watching us on Zoom, there is a chat on the right-hand side. Just type in your questions, and I will read them. So right now, there's a question about the strobing effect for the Pokemon. Is that actually true or an urban legend about It's actually strobing? true. It's yeah. True. Yes. It's true. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, that's what I remember it being most famous for. And I was like, oh, I got to go check this out. What, what is this thing that's causing <laughs> seizures in people? <laughs> That's how I got into it. Is that what uh, you heard about, Michelle? You're like, I got to check this out? Uh, no. I was, <laughs> I, oh, geez. When did that come out? 96? 95? 96? 97? Yeah. <laughs> um, where was I then? <laughs> Were you doing the news at the time? I, think, I, I, don't, I don't think I was doing the news. I was either in high school or college. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> but... um. I didn't hear it through that. I I've, I've just I just saw it like in passing on TV. I think I think it was on like the WB or something like that at the time or um I can't remember what channel it was on. <laughs> but th that's where I heard about it from. I'm just like, "Oh, this this show looks pretty cool." <laughs> <laughs> What I find most interesting, as um, I actually had interviewed you at the last MCON, Michelle, that a lot of times voiceover actors, at least now, because I'm sure James knows that in the old days, you guys used to be all together, and now it's just you guys are all separate. But since you, James and Michelle, you two are a team, and you work off each other a lot, is it weird that you only see each other and interact with each other at events and conventions as opposed to actually working together? Well, we try to we try to see each other like here yeah. and there. Like sometimes we'll see each other coming in and out of the booth, and um, we went to go. Well, when was that? When did we come see you, Carter? It was like January or something, December, January, before all this craziness happened. Oh, when, you came, when you came to Queens, when we, right? When we came yeah, to visit yeah, you, yeah. I, mean, I tried it. But my personal, if I had my way, I would see Michelle all the time because oh. <laughs> she's a great buddy, and and we're always hearing each other in the phones, and we're right. always. We're always having this, I wouldn't call it a competition, but it's like, oh, I already did my session, so I'm first, and now you got to match me. <laughs> then it's the other way around. So um, I don't get to see Michelle nearly enough. This, this is wonderful to be able to see. Yeah. But yeah, we, we've been working. I mean, when we first started, the, the first episode of Pokemon, or for the first five years, it was at, or the first eight years, it, it was with four kids. And we would see those people, and then they started doing more and more shows, and we were all kind of getting involved. I, I did Yu-Gi-Oh! I was the voice of Weevil Underwood, who was the, the bug trainer on Yu-Gi-Oh! And so we would do all these shows, and we'd see each other in passing, but at the very beginning, Pokemon was on the WB, and the WB would do uh, commercials every Friday for what they were going to sh show either Friday night for the next, for Saturday morning, so we would actually go to a studio, National Recording on 42nd Street, and we'd all be there. So everybody that was in the, the commercial would be there. So we'd all just like sit in the lobby before we go in and, and have a chance to talk and be people. I mean, I've always wanted to record. I think Michelle and I should record together. That I think, would be awesome. <laughs> you know, we do what we do. So. I think that's so cool. I, I personally believe that that is, it gives something to the performance that you can actually work off each other and interact with each other. Mm -hmm. makes it more of an acting job than just a, a voice acting job. Right, right. I, it's funny. I actually like, 
when I know I call him Carter because I'm so used to doing this yeah. <laughs> instead of James yeah. or Jimmy. Jimmy, I like I like when Carter goes first actually especially when we're doing singing stuff because like um, a lot of people might not know that carter actually has perfect pitch he's a musician too and he, he plays piano and guitar and he sings and he has perfect pitch and i don't <laughs> <laughs> so when we whenever we do like singing stuff like in the netflix movie that just came out the mewtwo strikes back evolution which was um, awesome he went oh, first yeah. He went first, but he also sang my part, so I could listen to what he did and follow him. So when, whenever we do any kind of singing thing, I want him to go first. I'm like, please let him go first, please. <laughs> so I can follow off of him because he, he know, like a, a microwave beep could go off and he'll be like, oh, that's a D sharp. <laughs> And then I get locked up and shot because I'm so annoying that way. <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> I've worked hard over the years to stop doing that because when I hear any kind of clink, it's like I know the note and it is. <laughs> but it comes in handy, you know, especially if, if I'm adapting a script and there is going to be music and sometimes they will have new music and sometimes they will use the original. And the original, at least I know what key it's in and I know what's going on just by hearing it. So that, that helps, I guess. All right, so we have another question from the chats from Keo Gaming. It says, if Jesse and James were forced to split up, who do you think Meowth would choose to stay with? Wow. Oh, I think James, definitely. <laughs> I, I, He's nicer. <laughs> He's nicer of the two. <laughs> I may be thinking outside the box, but I can't imagine Jesse and James splitting up. For any, Ever, yeah, there was there've been a couple episodes. Remember when we thought you were getting married? And, like the Doctor White episode? Yeah, I was freaking was, out. Yeah. I'm like, wait, 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 what's going on here? <laughs> I was I was nervous. That's when James shows his true colors. You know, it's like, oh, no, no, Jesse, I really, I do not. So, <laughs> and I she doesn't leave. She never. She doesn't leave. I think probably it'd be equal visitation if we did split. <laughs> year visitation with, rights. And half the year with Michelle. Yeah. All right. Can 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 all right, I'm gonna put you on the spot right now. Can Carter and Michelle, can you do a meeting of transferring of Meowth from one person to the other as if it was like a divorce transferring <laughs> the kid? Do you wanna do it? Do you mind? I don't I care. Do. Why not? I mean you go uh <laughs> visitation rights yeah so let's say we're we're we the, the car pulls up right <laughs> yeah you know, james is in the car with me out and is going to hand him off to jesse this is, this is so funny <laughs> well then i can start if you want i can say Do, oh you're gonna try, okay i'll start hello jesse dear you're looking exceptionally lovely today uh, by the way i hope to remember that two weeks from now is is christmas and and having to give you me off now and then not be able to see it for the holidays. I don't know if I can take it. Won't you please reconsider, Jesse? Oh, dry those eyes, please. Oh. <laughs> I'll go get to see him as it is. is. Oh, that's all. That's fine. You can feed me. I'm with you. Well, <laughs> I'd rather feed myself. Thank you. I only have so much money to spend on this thing. Wait, what's this thing? What are you talking about? You know, Meowth, we have to call them it for some reason. I don't know oh. why we can't call the Pokemon he and she. So I have to say that instead of him. Even though he speaks, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, that remark, that there's this writer, James Carter Cathcart, I don't know, and he has to call them it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth and it's awful, but what can I do? I do. All right, fine. <laughs> Have it your way. See, this is why we wouldn't be able to work together because I wouldn't be able to stop laughing. Like, I wouldn't be able, like, if we tried to work together, I, I would just be, I would, it would be impossible because I, he would just keep making me laugh. <laughs> but the chemistry is amazing. Like, I, I remember um, when I had I interviewed you before, Michelle, about you were saying about improv is always good to have. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes, Sometimes little things will work. I mean, like a lot of the times uh, we have to stay, you know, really strict to the script, especially because of the mouth flap. So because it's not prelay, prelay is when you record the voices first and then you animate afterwards. Um, but sorry if there's, if that's me, there's a car going by. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, when you're dubbing, the, the animation is already done. So you have to 
dub over that, you know, with, with whatever language you're doing, whether it's English or Spanish or Italian or German. And in the United States, we're very meticulous about the mouth flap. So um, we try to like match, but sometimes we'll have to change words a little bit here and there in order to, to make it fit. So <laughs> I think with prelay, you have a little more leeway to do more improv, but <laughs> so Carter, sometimes you dubbing. You know, you're <laughs> so Carter, you actually said you actually do the script uh, trans writing for the for the for the characters. So that is something that goes right down in your book. So how do you work it with the flapping and the actual English dialogue? How hard is that? It's 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 not hard. I've done it for a long time, and it's really more adapting because you know the show is produced in Japan first, obviously, and so what I will get will be a, a video of the Japanese performance, and then I will get a literal translation of what ah. they're saying and it will never fit and it will never be funny at all if it's, it's just like watching paint dry <laughs> Japanese, you know to hear me out say i'm afraid the boss is not going to be very happy with us what do you think jesse that kind of thing no that's can't i gotta and plus sometimes they'll have a sentence that long and maybe meowth will open his mouth like three times <laughs> you know? Right. So I just have to go back and rewrite everything. And it gets to the point now where it's like, if I know the, the, where I want the humor to go, then if I'm looking at the, at the lip flap, I can, it kind of just pops into my head. And then I quick put it down before I forget it. Because usually the first instinct is, is the right one. But yeah, I've, I, and I've done, Mike Hegney was the original uh, adapter. He, he, he adapted scripts starting season right away. First episode through, I don't remember if he stopped in season, he stopped for season five, but um, he really established the tone. His sense of humor and, and the way he would just completely ignore. I mean, as long as you kept the basic thread of what the, the episode was about, he would throw everything else away. And that's what made it so funny was just like, that those words are coming out of that mouth. So, um, and and Mike and I have been, you know, we're good buddies and stuff. So um, when I when I took over, he was really really nice and really helpful. And and you know, it's it. it I think the tone is kind of self generating now. You know, we know who's going to be a Weisenheimer, and we know who's <laughs> and we know that Ash isn't going to have a clue about ninety nine percent of <laughs> ever. He'll be like, huh? We're always in disguise, and he's like. Oh hi, how are you? And he like, oh, you know, just stuff like that. But it's it's, really, it's enjoyable when I get. I mean, Team Rocket gets all the gags, so I get to write the gags, and then we all, both of us get to go in and say them. It's great. Yeah, that's fun. All right, we have <laughs> another question from the chat. It says it's from Isabella Palmero. It says, when you first began, did you find it challenging to quote unquote talk to yourself in the recording booth? <laughs> <laughs> I talk to myself all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's only crazy when you answer yourself. When you're talking, it's fine. It's responding is the problem. Who was it? Um, um, DeForest Kelly in, in Star Trek. He, he played Dr. McCoy and he was like, people will start thinking I'm crazy if I'm talking to myself. And he keeps, he talks to himself all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but they put that like in the show and I'm just like, oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> no, I, for me, it doesn't, it doesn't drive me crazy at all. Um, I, the way I usually do it is I'll do James first because James, his vocal tone is clean and yes, he does get hysterical and yes, he turns into <laughs> a soprano sometimes doing a Wagner opera, but Meowth is the one with the, with the gravel. So I, I usually save him for last because if I'm going to blow my chops out, let me blow it out at the end of the session. <laughs> this would like Pokemon too. Because something like Dust Talks would like, or Cacnea oh. would be like, talks! like any, anything like crunchy, like in the throat would, like I would save that for less. But something like Piplub yeah, is like super high. So that's not going to, you know, like really affect me too much. <laughs> All right. So that makes me think of two questions right off the bat. Number one would be, what kind of vocal exercises do you do to prepare for voice sessions? <laughs> <clears throat> it's funny. Vocal exercises are, are kind of like, singing exercises if anybody sings you know it's like la 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 but you do like like lip flutters and things like that you know like s like s's and like those things <laughs> i do those all the time <laughs> yeah the there's shower. definitely a series of, of vocal exercises i just try to make sure that i've opened up my 
top of my head, you know, the really high notes, because I know before the end of any episode, somebody's going to get hysterical and it's going to be like <laughs> soprano stratosphere. So mm -hmm. I have to make sure that's opened up and, and warmed up. Otherwise I'll just, I mean, I've done it a few times where I blow myself out after like a half hour and I'm like, Oh, what am I going to do now? So I'm trying to learn, you know, keep it. So the second, the second question would be, how do you decide what Pokemon sound like? I mean, because the Japanese translation sometimes doesn't match at all, especially with um, just that they say their name. Even that's different in a different language. So how do you decide what they sound like? Uh, we do listen to the Japanese first to see kind of what they're doing. Because like Piplup in Japanese is Pochama. So like it's really different vowels. You got the O and A in there that you could do it. And, and this is just the I and U. And, and we have so many more consonants than vowels. Because if you notice in like the Japanese language, they end everything on a vowel. Maybe that's why the language sounds so pretty. Because it's like, watashi wa. You know? <laughs> <laughs> They'll even add it to like, I heard, um, it, I heard somebody say crowdfunding and it's like crowdfunding. Like they'll add, they'll add U's and A's. It's true. I don't, I'm not making it up, I swear. <laughs> and they'll add like U's and A's at the end, maybe because vowels sound prettier than consonants do. So, but I know like, like Pip, um, Pikachu is Pikachu. It's Ikoe Otani in, in Japanese, which is funny because we were talking about this before, Carter and I, that P uh, Pikachu has its own track. Mm. Like when it's sent to like any studio it's like it's like here's the music and sound effects and here's pikachu because <laughs> pikachu will never change pikachu is pikachu in every single country <laughs> that's right all right we got another question from the chat it says it's from jessica chautun c-h-a-u-t-i-n i'm sorry i pronounced your name wrong um i'm sure you get this a lot but jesse and james are purely platonic right <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> You're never going to get an answer out of me. <laughs> I think it's a mystery. I think it will always be a mystery, and I love it. Because it, it allows Jesse and James to just kind of be whoever they are in any situation. But it's obvious that they care for each other a lot. So. Oh, yeah. They're besties. Yeah. <laughs> So when you guys are on the, on the street, just walking around, going to stores, before the apocalypse. Before, the, <laughs> before masks. And <laughs> has anybody recognized your voice? And it's like, oh my God, I know your voice. Who are you? Has that ever happened to you guys? Do you want to go first? <laughs> go ahead. It's, I, I, um, I was recognized. It was funny. Not for my voice, but I guess like my appearance wise. Somebody recognized me. There's a Japanese marketplace in uh, Edgewater, New Jersey. Although it's called Mitsua, and I I love going there. I miss going there so much. I usually go there, and they have like great food, and I love to get tea, lots of green tea, and um, and somebody at one of the registers, I went to go buy something, and they were like, "Are you Michelle Knotts?" And I was like, oh, <laughs> "Somebody recognized it." Because if I go to just like a normal like supermarket or like Target or something like that around here, nobody knows who I am. Nobody recognizes me. <laughs> Somebody at my local mall did recognize me, but we we were like friends on like social media, like Facebook or Twitter, and he sees my pictures all the time. I didn't know who he was, but he's just like, hey, and he worked at one of the kiosks. It was like a candy kiosk. And I was like, oh, hi. Like, I didn't know who he was, but I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> and he recognized me at the mall. So those were really like the two big instances. And then at cons, you know, people recognize you all the time. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Yes. If, if, if I don't know somebody and I'm on the street, I think nobody expects those noises to come out of this face. Right. <laughs> so, you know, the, or with a beard or whatever it is. But when, when Build-A-Bear came out with the talking yowf, I, I wanted them to recognize me and none of them believed me. <laughs> it was very cool. So what I would do is, you know, at the very beginning, um, when they had Pokemon Go, and so then you'd see these groups, usually of, of boys, but they would all be playing the game with their phones and walking around like in packs, you know? So I'd walk up behind a group and I go, so did you catch me yet? And they would turn around and look at me. <laughs> and instead of going, oh, cool, they would be like, you're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this crazy guy? <laughs> I did go to a Build-A-Bear here in Indiana, in Mishawaka. It, was, it came out two years ago, I think. 
two summers ago or something. And uh, I wanted one. And the only way I was going to get one was to buy one. And they just come out. So drove 50 miles, walked into the store, <laughs> told them who I was. And then I wanted to buy one of these, these meows. And the manager of the store looked at me like she had seen a ghost. And she went running into the back room. And I'm sure she was checking <laughs> to see if I was just a psycho. And once she saw it, it really was me. It was great. It was great. But people usually don't make the connection. No. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys ever been to Japan? No, I would love to go. <gasps> I want to try the food. <laughs> I love food. <laughs> I'm not allergic to anything, which is bad, because then I could eat whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> Back in early four kids days, I remember the production staff and I think the top brass, they all went to Japan to meet all the Pokemon people none of the voice actors went because you know it was he had to be you know up up by echelon but um no i would love to go but oh, you know cool. i don't i don't i don't think the upper echelon understands the power and importance of the voice actor because <laughs> like when you mentioned og read more i was like holy crap and i was like that's that was you <laughs> <laughs> when i first found that out i i was like what i remember watching that when i was a kid and like we were at CloverCon, i think and that was the, i didn't even know that you did that and that was the first time you said that and i was like oh, wait a minute you were og remore and i was like freaking out i was like no way <laughs> yeah he had a little blue uh, anchor hat or something right yep. uh, yeah like holy crap man well there was a voice actor uh, actually i think there were two voices before me but the second voice actor he talked like oh, captain og read more he sounded like he couldn't read <laughs> you know? and so i think abc For captain OG Reborn. It, but they didn't want to pay you know they didn't want to pay of course because i was doing the music as well so i just did it thinking this will be great promotion because it's on network tv every saturday and i really didn't care if i got paid or not it was a, it was not a union thing or anything but what happened was then they started doing all these public service announcements and then i was going into like abc tv to record all these different public service. that was all very cool work and uh, ah. i was glad to be that guy really <laughs> i see we have another question from the chat it is from stephanie french and she asks how is it recording from home going any challenges it's tough. <laughs> it's a lot. It's going a lot slower than when if if we actually went into the studio to record. Um, you know, because we don't we don't have the the engineer and the and the director here. Everybody is like through the headphones, and we can't see anybody. So usually we could see them in in the booths and studios. There's like a, a window that we could look through. You know, and and it's it's a lot different it's it's hard i i have like a whisper room and i've been recording stuff from home for a while but never dubbing i've never dubbed at home before i've done like um because video games you don't need to dub i've done like video games and telephone prompts and audiobooks and all this other stuff from home but i don't have to look at anything so it was it was a challenge for me because like i'm like okay i have to set up i have to set up another monitor in the booth and connect all of this stuff and it was it was interesting <laughs> it's it's go it's just a little slow going right now so i don't know if carter's done anything yet. no i think i have as a matter of fact this week it'll be my first time and again i thank michelle for going first because <laughs> she was able to kind of give me a heads up on on the equipment and just what what to generally expect and you know, I've tested everything more or less, and it seems like it's going to be a pretty easy go, but I know it's, I know it's not going to, so I don't know, I just, but you really Good made luck. it easier. By I made some videos for Carter. I made, like, videos on my phone. I'm like, okay, here's what you got to do, because <laughs> I'm just like, oh, man, I'm going first. Okay. <laughs> Let me try to do this, but it worked out okay. It's just, it's just uh, a little slower going than what we're used to, so yeah <laughs> let's see we have another question from the chat from carolyn uh what commercials have you guys voiced and how is that different than voice uh VAing in anime hi carolyn hi i knew carolyn oh, hi. <laughs> it's hey. carolyn hi Yay. you we know every you. carolyn we miss everyone <laughs> if it's a carolyn we're thinking of <laughs> well how is so how is it different oh sorry do you want to go first you go first 
Well, the first, there was, there was a few years, right before the Screen Actors Guild strike, which happened, I don't know if it was the early 2000s or the late 1900s, whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever it was, late 20th century. But um, I had two agents and I was doing tons of jingle work. And I remember once going in, I mean, it was just, it was so wonderful because I did a commercial for Kit Kat. And the, this was back when the when the, the they just started using "Give me a break, give me a break." Right? So they had a the the scene was the the outside of a movie theater, and the marquee said "Kit Kat break time" with all of these spotlights, you know. And so I just went in and I I, I said three times I went, uh, "Ladies and gentlemen, Kit Kat break time." I said it three times. I went home. They took the second take. It was just supposed to be a demo. And then they paid me. And it, <laughs> it was incredible because it went on for a year. I mean, that commercial ran every 10 minutes. So that was lovely. So, and it, but it's totally different because you're reading a script, but you're not worried about um, mouths on the screen or, or um, you know, a long script or, or any of that kind of stuff. It's a jingle stuff is a lot different. You know, it's fun, you know. Commercials are super short. They're usually like 30 seconds to 60 seconds long, right? It's just, they're, they're a lot shorter than working on like an anime or a video game or something like that. Right, <laughs> it is. There was a commercial I did in the 80s and I forget the name of the store, but it was a clothing store. And I, the first thing, I mean, I was doing the music for it. So, but I did the voiceover and I said, I have nothing to wear. They put that. <laughs> phrase and put it on WBLS, they put it on Kiss FM, they put it all over, and they would just play it at random um, during songs, during records. And uh, I, it would have been nice to make some money, but it was just like driving in a car and hearing that and just almost crashing, laughing so hard because it was like that just came out of a silly commercial. But there's a lot of that. Everybody's trying to get their own little cliche, their own little hook, you know. All right, we have another question from the chat. It is from Kenta X Ken Ryu D. Um, oh yeah, I have a question. How did it feel when Pokemon Journeys was finally announced? Oh, I'm, we're not allowed to talk about that. <laughs> well, how did it feel? Are you happy, sad? We'll, we'll just throw it down the line. Happy, sad. Happy. happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, I mean, a season is usually what? Three years, I think it's three years. Yeah, I it's, don't remember if there's ever been a four year, but you know, my experience is we've been through how many regions now. So, and we're not allowed to say anything about anything. I, we can talk uh, you're, about- You're happy. <laughs> I have to say though, the Alola region, I really grew to love all of those kids. I love Alola too. Yeah, the yeah. school kids, the characters and their personalities. I mean, to me, that was Pokemon really reaching into um, their character, you know, creative bag, you know. And there were, what, six of them? Five? Kids? Yeah. Six were there. I love that. I absolutely love that scene, series. And that's all I can say. I can say no more. See, I think happy. I, I, Alola, like Sun and Moon. Yeah, Sun and Moon, Alo the Alola region, I think was my favorite, I think. I, I love it so much. It, yep. There's it, like Team Rocket is so funny, and there's so many more characters and kids in it. It's not just like one or two people walking around with Ash. You know, it's it's a whole group, and they go to school, and it's it's so different. And and I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was great. Yep. <laughs> all right, one more question here. Let's see. From Pat Drennan, in all the times James gets eaten by Weeping Bell or <laughs> Vitra Bell, not sure who eats him, but who did you ever think I'll get? my revenge somehow or incorporate that into a team rocket tactic. <laughs> um, I, James, one thing about James, you can, you can, you know, say team rocket. Yeah, they're evil and all that stuff. But the, the truth is James is, is a big hearted softy, you know, and, and he loves his Pokemon and his Pokemon love him. And I don't think he ever got angry um, when his, when they would bite him. I mean, um, a Carnivine used to bite him all the time, you know, and I was Carnivine as well. I love those. I mean, I just, I love, I love it when it turns into something like that. But no, I never, he never, James never got mad. So. All right. One more question from the chat from Jessica Chowteen. Um, who are your favorite voice actors? Who are your inspirations? Ooh. Oh, I got, I got to go. You want me to go oh. first or no? <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> so um I I was always a huge fan when I was a kid of like Robin Williams and Mork and Mindy, but it was it was so funny. I don't mean to get on like my feminist soapbox or anything like that. <laughs> I used to love to watch Carol Burnett and Tracy oh, Ullman. And it was really cool to finally see like women get out there and be funny. Cause it was always like, oh, men are comedians, men are, oh, men are funny. You know, <laughs> no offense, no offense or anything. I'm just saying, I'm just saying as, as a young girl, like I always wanted to just be funny. You know, I just want people to laugh and have fun and smile and to watch these women just be like hilarious. And Lucille Ball was like, was cool too. Um, I, I, I mostly grew up with like, like Tracy Ullman and the Carol Burnett show. And I loved these women so much. And on the Tracy Ullman show, that's where the Simpsons started. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I saw the Simpsons and like they were like voice actors behind it. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. Cause they started, the Simpsons started out with like really short. They were only like a couple minutes long. It wasn't like a whole half hour show. And that's what really like started me to get into just like like the acting and voice acting and stuff when I was younger. Cause I was like, oh, this is just so cool and amazing to see these women be like so funny and making me laugh. I was just like, I could really relate to them, you know, being female. <laughs> like, what about you, Carter? Everybody you just mentioned, I totally agree with. I am a bit of an older fart than other people. <laughs> I grew up um, with, my favorite two voice actors, hands down period, Mel Blanc and June Foray. Oh, two of them yeah. did all those Looney Tunes cartoons and each one of them can do like a hundred voices. And when I see the, you know, I grew up with the, mostly seeing the, the ones from the forties. That's usually what they would show on Saturday mornings. And, and they both, you know, were in a lot of them, but they both basically took care of the male and female parts. But, Mel Blanc, when he was young, um, and they would do all the dubbing on a big soundstage at Warner Brothers, and there was no acoustic treatment. It was like being in a basketball court. And so when he would scream, you, it would just, like, you'd hear the whole room. It was incredible. And, um, and then, of course, Mel Blanc was also, uh, uh, he was on the Jack Benny program a lot. He used to, they used to do such politically incorrect stuff. He would <laughs> The, the Mexican with the big hat over his head and he'd be sitting against a tree and Jack Benny would come up and he'd go, um, you know, what's your name? And he goes, Sai. And he says, Sai? See. Si. So you have a sister? See. Si. What's her name? Sue. And that's what he's <laughs> make me die. So those two. Those are my boys. <laughs> so we have less than 10 minutes to go before uh, the panel ends. So I want to ask you a very um, important question. So people always ask about the, the key to voice acting, about doing silly voices, but a lot of times people forget about the acting part of the voice acting. Can you guys tell us a little bit about how that works, the acting part? You want to go first? <laughs> <laughs> I like how you always say, do you want to go first? Do you want to go first? I don't know. I don't want to... No, I'll just keep it quick. I, it's something to me, I think it was from all those years of watching cartoons. And I'll bet you Michelle had the same experience. <laughs> you start getting a certain melody in your head of the way people are talking and you get a rhythm and, and timing of these one line gags. And so I don't really think about it because when we're dubbing, I mean, there's like three, four things that we're doing at the same time. And besides keeping everything in sync and, and one eyes on the monitor and one eyes on the script and, and you know, it's just, it's crazy. But um, it, for me, it's just kind of a, it just, hopefully it works successfully, but without me thinking too much about it. There are times when you have to push it a little farther, maybe than you thought. But for me, I just, you know, it's kind of interesting. Yes. What about you, Michelle? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, well, it's, I'm trying to think of like, I think it was like Pokemon Movie 9 in the Temple of the Sea, where I had to actually cry a lot. Mm. And if you could, um, when you... It's, I guess, just putting yourself in the moment of the character and trying to, it, even if it is animation, if it's animated, it's like, it has to be believable and real, you know? It's like, you're actually that person. So it's like, sometimes you can't put them in that situation because it's like, you know, Pokemon don't really exist in the real world. And, it, it, you know, but if you think of other things that would maybe make you sad at that time, you know, or, or upset and would help you 
hone that kind of emotion that you need for that moment. Because being like silly and funny and happy is easy. I think being upset and sad and crying is hard. Like it, I think that's that's really hard. So there was, a, there was um, a, that episode where James had to give up Chimeco, and I remember I had to cry. Oh yeah. And I couldn't stop crying. That was the problem. It just kind of wrecked yeah. the whole. You know. Anyway. It's tough because it's like, okay, can you give me a minute? I got to blow my nose. Because then, like, you're going to go do, like, the next line and your nose is all stuffy. So you're like, <laughs> It's like, wait, I got to blow my nose. <laughs> so we have another question from uh, the chat from Keo Gaming. Did Michelle ever develop laryngitis from voicing Beware? <laughs> you know what's so funny about Beware? <laughs> I love Beware. <laughs> The director, Lisa Ortiz, is, she's so funny. She comes up to me and she's like, I know you can reach that high. <laughs> so I want you to play Beware. And I'm like, oh, wait, what? What is it? Because I didn't, I didn't really know anything about Beware. You know, we were just getting into Olola and Sun and Moon. And she played the Japanese for me. And I was like, oh my God, okay. Because so <laughs> Beware is like really, really, funny enough, I didn't, I've never, I have the only, I'm trying to think. Um, I've, I've gotten like laryngitis before, but it's, um, it's funny. It's more so the ones that are really like, like Wubat and, and Dustox and Cacnea and Swubat. It's like, Wah! when it's anything like has texture to it, but where it's just like, Wah! and it's just, but where is like so high. It's so funny. Higher things aren't really as bad as like, like deeper gruff things on your voice these talks and when it's anything like scratchy that will put if i do that for way too long i mean you train your body in order to not hurt yourself but sometimes it's just like a which is why like they have to keep sessions shorter sometimes it like for voice actors who are in like call of duty all they're doing is screaming get down on the ground move over and it's you can you can only do that for so long so we only have like maybe two three hour sessions like that if there's a lot of screaming so you know um you can't do like an eight hour session of screaming that's insane <laughs> it's crazy so um we we generally keep the the ses sessions shorter especially if there's a lot of screaming involved <laughs> <laughs> so from what I understand about voice acting, um, whenever you're going for a job, for a new job with cartoon characters that haven't been voiced before, they show you the image of what the character looks like. And then you have to decide what does that voice sound like. So is, is it just like, I'm going to decide that I'm going to use the easiest voice first and then build from there? Or do you decide I'm just going to use my voice? What's the deciding process in that? You want to go for it? <laughs> <laughs> The thing that always comes to mind for me was when the show first came out um, and I got the part of Gary, I didn't want, I said, is there any way I don't have to listen to the Japanese? Because I already have, the minute I saw his hair and I saw his hair was really pointy and sharp and stuff, I just said, I know what that voice is. So I, and then I realized later that the Japanese Gary is completely different. <laughs> Um, but these days, you know, and also Meowth and James, obviously they had precedent. So um, I took my cues from previous voices, but I still ended up, if I, if I put it, I did it my own way. Because if I had to constantly worry about sounding like somebody else and then trying to act and, and then whatever tone, I, I would have jumped off a bridge. So you know. Let's see, we have another question from the chat. It is from, oh boy, M-A-L-I-K-T-C-G. Malik ticket. I'm not even I'm trying. <laughs> Sorry. Um, how do you guys keep your voices healthy, especially after a gruff session? Ooh, tea. Lots of tea. Tea with honey. Um, there's this awesome stuff called um, what's it called? Loquat. Or it's like neem pong. It's it's a Chinese syrup. Syrup syrup? Syrup. Syrup. <laughs> <laughs> From Joyzy. I don't know. We say syrup. <laughs> what a <laughs> coffee um coffee. <laughs> coffee yes coffee no coffee is bad um <laughs> no coffee <laughs> no starbucks no coffee uh no stuff yeah right gargling with warm salt water is really good iodized salt water is good so um yeah gargling with warm salt water that chinese throat syrup really saved me a lot it saved me so many times um and tea with honey or lemon um, ginger, ginger's really good. Um, 
What did you, did you say you oregano? Turned on, you turned you me on to the best, uh, I was, I remember before I had to go in to do something and I knew it was going to be like four hours of me out screaming. <laughs> and I was, and I think I had a fever. I think I had a little bit of a flu. And you said, go to GNC and buy some oil of oregano. Oh, okay. And I went and I bought it and the stuff is like miraculous. I, I, <laughs> I took, a, you know, a bunch of drops, however it was, went to sleep, woke up and I was fine. It was, oil of oregano, man. Try that. It's amazing. Woohoo. All right. So we have, I would say, about less than five minutes now for the chat. So keep your questions coming. But I want to ask you guys, what does Pokemon mean to you? Because, I mean, that's one of the longest running cartoons out there. So it must have some significance. Or does it have or is it just another job? What does it mean to you guys? <laughs> What does it mean to you? <laughs> I love the show. That, one of the things about Pokemon that I really, really love, and I'll be sitting here adapting a script, and I, and I don't know how they do it. I'll just start to cry. There are, they know how to just squeeze certain emotions out. And, and, and very few, um, I mean, lots of cartoon shows will attempt to go there. But nobody does it quite like Pokemon does. I, I'm I'm in awe of how how many emotions they and then they can turn right around in 20 seconds and be total goofballs. So that's what I like about it. You you get really attached to a show when it's it's this long running, you know, it's like like Dragon Ball or um, Naruto or Inuyasha or Bleach or something like that. That's that's longer than just like 12 or 13 episodes. A lot of anime out there is only 12 or 13 episodes. So. You really get attached to the characters and something like this. I what I love about the show is like I met my best one of my best friends, James Carter Cathcart. Aww. On this show. Aww. <laughs> Aww. I talk I talk it's so funny, like during this pandemic, I talk to Carter like every day now. <laughs> like I always I'm always texting him like, Hey, how you doing today? <laughs> Cause I'm just like yeah. I'm I'm inside constantly. <laughs> I love it. I just love it. I think we became like better like best friends through this pandemic <laughs> better best friends all right better best friends <laughs> yep. 100 percent agree so one <laughs> thing about being an actor as i talked to many actors on, on on our show um rejection that is something that comes up quite often and they, <laughs> a lot of times actors like you have to be able to handle being rejected even now, since you're doing so many voices, so much work, do you guys still get rejections? And how do you guys handle that? Oh, all the time. <laughs> I do auditions <laughs> like every other day. I do, you, when you do auditions, you have to do them and, and, and do the audition, send it in, forget about it. That's all, forget about it. <laughs> That's all you can do. You know, you can't sit and dwell on every audition that you do. You'll drive yourself crazy, yeah. you know? Which is why they usually don't tell you you did or you didn't get the part. Plus, there's so many people auditioning for it. They just don't have time to do that. They don't have time to tell each individual person, like, you got this part or you didn't get this part. And here's why. You, they don't have time to explain that. There's so much time pressure involved in getting a project done, whether whatever it could be, you know? So... I do auditions and then I forget about it. And if I do get it, great, awesome. I save everything on my, on my computer in a folder just in case I need to go back. And usually they'll have it, the copy anyway, and they'll be like, this is what you sounded like. Because sometimes months will go by. I've done auditions and like three, four, five months go by and they're like, hey, you got this part in this video game. And I'm like, what, what is this? Because <laughs> I've, I've already done, you know, 300 more auditions and I forget what this is. I have no idea what it is. So thankfully I save it. I'm like, what's the character? And then I look it up in my folder, you know, and I'm like, oh, okay. And then it comes back to me. Cause you do like so many auditions and it's like, you, you just got to do it and forget about it. Like that's all you can do in voiceover. <laughs> well, and it's true also in music. Uh, I remember right. there was a very famous record producer and I can't think of his name, but he said basically the attitude of A&R people at a record company of artists and repertoire is you're going to be right 99% of the time if you say no 100% of the time. And that's their attitude. They just reject everything, you know? And a lot of times something will come in and if it's politically connected, like, oh, well, that's the person that did this with that person and okay, well then we gotta sign him up. But just like sending material, it could be the greatest material in the world. But if, if you're not connected, chances are it's just going to be no. You know, that's wow. the way it is. All right, we got another question from the chat. It is from Carolyn again. The only Carolyn in the world, or all the Carolyns in the world. 
Um, with the pandemic, is it harder to find remote work or is there more of it now? It's so funny. I actually got a job because I have a home studio. Um, it was that um, Forgotten Waters that just came out. It's a, it's a mobile game. It's a video game. And the director from Ogatron was just like, who has, who has a home studio? Who's got a home studio? And I'm like, I do. <laughs> so it, it's so fun. You'll, it's so amazing how many people actually don't have home studios. And now everybody's trying to get a home studio because like, we don't know how long this is going to go on for. And like being like in New, 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 if you're in like New York and New Jersey, this is like the worst spot to be in right now. I can't go anywhere. <laughs> so, um, so I, I, I feel like I've gotten um, a little bit more work, but then like other people are starting to start their own home studios. Um, I'm trying to do like a little more streaming because I, ha I don't have that travel time. I commute to New York from New Jersey. So it's like, I don't have to travel anymore. I'm right here. I'm right at home. So I'm just like, okay. What do I so I started doing like a little bit of uh, streaming video games on Twitch, which has been a lot of fun. It's super fun. So um you know, I, you, you try and like make do with what you can <laughs> right now. It's tough. <laughs> okay, so I guess this would be the final question from the chat um, from Kelly Gordon. It says, if a position to open up a voice, a character in the Marvel Universe, who would you like to voice? Or do you just stick to anime? Ooh. Carter, who do you want to be in the Marvel Universe? I, you, you tell me. <laughs> I could... I don't know. All of them. I want to do all, all of them. them. All the voices. Yeah. I would say whatever doesn't shred my vocal cords. That's one thing I, I notice is that I'm not a, I, I don't like shredding my, my throat as much as some, um, like when I did Weevil way back in Yu-Gi-Oh! I mean that every session was a vocal shred. I, I, one time I had to do five hours of him and I woke up the next day with 103 fever and I had the flu. Oof. So, and I know it came from the session. So it's a marvel. There's a lot of, shredding going on in voices so i don't know you know i'm not exactly you know when you talk like this you're not exactly the big superhero you know? <laughs> <laughs> i can see you as rocket or rocket in guardians of the galaxy <laughs> okay that would be funny <laughs> what about you michelle what would be your character oh geez i don't know it, it's, oh, it's tough because it's like i hate to be like mm, there's too many men because it's like <laughs> there's iron man and captain america and the hulk and you know, and it's like, okay, so I got Black Widow and Captain Marvel um, and maybe like a couple others. <laughs> like there's not too many to choose from. I mean, I love Black Widow. She's, a, I love Scarlett Johansson. She's awesome. She's amazing. <laughs> All right. So um, what kind of uh, tips can you give for people who want to start out in the voice acting? Because we're almost done. So Get a home uh... studio. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so let's, let's start with that. What, what consists of a home studio? What, what basic equipment? Um, soundproofing. Soundproofing is the most important right now. Um, you cannot record, like right now, it sounds like, I'm in an open room right now. I'm in like my back room, this is, a, and there's so much echo going on right now, you can hear it. This is bad. This is like extremely yeah. bad. You need a very, very dead space. With, like, a lot of people are recording in their closets, so you need like, like comforters, blankets, clothes, carpeting, anything to deaden the sound, I think is the most, more so important than like what kind of microphone you have, even though if you have a good microphone, that's good. But if you have like a $2,000 Neumann, you know, microphone, it's not gonna matter if there's a huge echo in the room because there's only so much an engineer can do. An engineer can take out a lot. Engineers, I think engineers deserve way more praise than they get. You know, they should be, they should be the guests uh, at conventions because they do so much. Engineers do so much to help us out and like make us sound good. <laughs> what about you, Carter? But, um, since you're, you're, you're starting your own in-home studio, what would be your advice beyond the studio? Well, I had in the, and starting in 1982, I had a music studio that I um, had through the 90s. And I, I did a lot of albums out of that. And, and I, it was an apartment on, on the ground floor in Manhattan on East 82nd Street. And wow. so what I did is I had somebody come in and we dropped the ceiling. We, we put in, I mean, it was dead. You couldn't hear anything coming from the outside or from any other apartments or anything. So I think Michelle's right. I think acoustic treatments. Now, where I am right now in Indiana, 
um, I'm here because, you know, like I said, we've been kind of stuck here with the, the quarantine and all that kind of stuff. And I am not going to be flying anywhere for a while. So when we go, it'll, we'll be driving back, but it's so quiet. This neighborhood is completely quiet. And so I have a little room upstairs that's carpeted and I got one of those, uh, acoustic it's it's a mic stand but it has it, it's like a surround with foam and then behind me i put blankets all over the walls so if i'm sitting in between those two things it's it sounds great and, and michelle's also right it, it really do, you don't need to spend a million dollars on a microphone you need to have a space that sounds really good that's mm -hmm. absolutely correct yeah all right so that's <laughs> about uh the end of the panel for the time we have uh, do you guys want to have any final thoughts uh, for everybody listening and for people who are going to be watching this in the future stay safe everybody stay safe and healthy yeah <laughs> carter well, <laughs> final thought? In the future, let's say i'll say um, i hope you thoroughly enjoyed season 30 of pokemon <laughs> it was lovely so when they see it eight years from now they'll go yeah we did we liked it <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm really appreciative to, to be able to talk and hang out with Michelle and, and get to know all you people. This has been, you know, it, it, thank you. I, the worst thing about this whole thing is it's like you spend so much time alone and mm. this is nice not to, to yeah. have this time and to see Michelle again. Indeed. Oh. indeed. So I guess, um, Oh, where can people contact you and all that social media stuff? That's an important part, right? Sure. Where, where do we so, come? <laughs> <laughs> You're on Facebook, Carter. <laughs> That's true. We are on Facebook. Facebook? I'm on Twitter. You got to get back to your Twitter. <laughs> I know. I haven't done we, much Twitter at all. But I we, do we, have, a, I have a musician's page, James Conner Cathcart. I have a fan page, which is mostly the cartoon stuff, and then my regular page. So it, there's a lot of people around that's a, that's the best place for me I, I don't really do instagram much i think i did one picture it's still on instagram it's a picture of uh uh bernie sanders standing next to james <laughs> and, and I catch yes. protect the world from devastation i put that up in 2016 I, I really haven't done much since but facebook there's a lot of stuff there. All right, so thank you guys so much for being part of the MCON Online Anime Fest for the first time, even though it's the 10th year. Thank you so much. Let's hear for uh, our guests. Yay. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank that was so fun. Much. It's been a good time. That was awesome. It was so great to see you guys again. Yeah. All right, thank thanks you. a lot, guys. I'm going to be stopping the recording now, so make sure you tune in to more uh, MCON stuff for next year. Follow the MCON Anime online fest mm -hmm. on Facebook and we'll yeah. see you next time. All right. Thank you, Thank you very Thank you. much.